Additionally, we had a, a couple of spacewalks that took place to not only uh, provide maintenance to the International Space Station, but also uh, where we swabbed the outside of the space station near vents to see if any microbes that we all have microbes on us to see if any of those could survive in the harsh environment of space, which again is very important for us to know and understand as we continue to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Very exciting stuff. Now, at this point, we have now entered the communications blackout period for the Dragon spacecraft. This lasts approximately seven minutes due to plasma formation around the spacecraft itself. During this time, no vehicle telemetry is received by mission control or the recovery team, and no external commanding of the vehicle or voice communication is possible. But as a reminder, Dragon is designed to fly itself. During re-entry, the vehicle will be slowing down from orbital velocity, which is approximately 17,500 miles per hour. The top temperature that Dragon will experience upon re-entry is 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. This blackout period, as I said before, we expect it to last about seven minutes today, uh, concluding at 5.51 p.m. Eastern time or 2.51 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we right there have our first view of Dragon Freedom coming home to Earth. And that view is from the WB-57, which is one of NASA's high altitude planes that is tracking. Um, now, because of the way that this uh, camera is configured, it does look like it is uh, dark, but it is indeed daytime, and you're beginning to see that plasma trail as uh, Dragon re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. All of that is expected. We are uh, anticipating an acquisition of signal around 2.51 p.m. Pacific time, so just minutes from now, and you may hear the core begin to hail out um, or call Dragon uh, for communications and see if we can potentially get communications with them a little bit earlier. Following this, we'll have two events in rapid succession. We'll have the Drogue parachutes deploy at 2.53 p.m. Pacific, followed by the mains just one minute later at 2.54 p.m. Pacific time, ahead of a splashdown at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Pretty, in pretty incredible views of the Dragon spacecraft making its way home back to planet Earth with the Crew-9 astronauts on board. Once again, this view is coming from the WB-57 plane. That heat shield we can see doing magnificent work as it works to... Um, Freedom, SpaceX, comm check. All right, we're gonna start hearing uh, the SpaceX crew operations resource, resource engineer. SpaceX, freedom is with you. 4.16, enjoying the ride. Copy that, freedom. Great news there from Commander Nick Haig reporting back. We see a healthy flight computer, expect automated shoot deployment. Like we said before, things moving very quickly as Dragon Freedom makes its way home. Next event uh, coming up will be deployment of the Drogue parachutes. This occurs around 18,000 feet. GPS has converged. Expect nominal altitude for Drogue chute deployment. We're about two minutes away from deployment of those drogue parachutes. Now the heat shield uh, is, is continuing to work to slow the vehicle down. That, that entry period, the, the, space, the, excuse me, the, the Dragon spacecraft went from orbital velocity about 17,500 miles per hour down to about 350 miles per hour. So it really gives you a sense of why that plasma builds up on the exterior of the capsule thanks to the heat shield and the work that it does. Those drogue parachutes will slow it down from 350 to uh, about 119 miles per hour. We can see 15 kilometers, brace for drogue window. We can see seat rotation happening inside the capsule. Great to get those first views of our crew members. 
Once again, the capsules are going about 350 miles per hour when the drogues are deployed. Um, those drogue parachutes that we manufacture here in-house are uh, going to slow the, the, the spacecraft down to 119 miles per hour. And that is when we will see the main parachutes deploy, and that occurs about 6,000 feet above the ocean's surface. And we are expecting drogue deployment at 2.53 p.m. Pacific, so we should see it any second now. And there you are getting a great view of Crew-9 inside Dragon Freedom. As it returns back to Earth, we are awaiting the drogue deploys. This view coming from the WB-57 high-altitude plane. And there you see it on your screen, drogue deployment. Drogue descent rate nominal. You can hear the crowd here. Visual on two healthy drogues. crowd here very excited as Dragon Freedom continues to make its way back to planet Earth. Next up, we'll stand by for the main deployment of the parachutes. The mains are quite a bit larger. You'll be able to notice the difference on your screen once they deploy, and they continue to ensure that the Dragon uh, spacecraft slows down even further. As we mentioned, Freedom will be traveling 16 miles per hour when it splashes down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, here at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon. And there we go. We have visual on four healthy mains. That view was from inside. Freedom copy. And that view was from inside one of the buckets where the parachutes are located. So we see a great view there of the reefing on those parachutes. And as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to inflate fully, four beautiful, healthy mains. Now awaiting visuals of splashdown. We'll start to hear Commander Nick Haig. Copy, 1,000. As we heard right there, Commander Nick Haig will be calling out the altitude of the Dragon capsule from here on out. Landing in water is simpler and provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. You can see those, uh, those parachutes continuing to slow the Dragon capsule down. And if you're just joining us, you're looking at 800 meters, a live view of Crew-9 just minutes away from splashing down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, splash down two minutes from now at 2.57 p.m. Pacific. We do have four healthy mains really doing the job there, just breathtaking views of a calm, glass-like ocean off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Crew 9 just minutes away from splashing down. This is really such an incredible shot. Uh, that Copy, was... 600. That was a live view from our recovery vessel. Uh, Megan, which is stationed a couple miles away from the splashdown site, we can see the crew there using their, uh, their restraints as resting places for their arms. They were just in space moments ago, <laughs> so their arms were able to float freely. 400 meters. This is a gorgeous bluebird day here that we have for the splashdown of Crew-9. It's incredible to think that the Dragon capsule just minutes ago was going over 17,000 miles per hour and now gently coasting to a soft splashdown. 200. Copy, 200 meters. Brace for splashdown. As you can see there on your screen, continuing to monitor progress of the Dragon spacecraft. And we're going to stand by for splashdown located in the Gulf of America um, off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And splashdown, Crew 9 back on Earth. Good main release. 
Copy, splash down. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. It is uh, just an amazing thing. What a ride. I see a capsule full of grins ear to ear. And as you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation of splashdown. Dragon Freedom has returned home and NASA astronauts. System safety verifications are in progress. We'll report back when recovery personnel are en route. Okay. Uh, understand. And, uh, we're in section two, four decimal 800. Uh, 